Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's kind of an exciting day. Um, I've decided to make a sh little short video about um, starting hydroponic or getting started growing uh, tomatoes just like these uh, in your house all winter long. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, there's just a few things I've got I'm pretty sure I got everything out here that I need. Uh, you're just going to need some small jars like these, just just a small container to separate um, your uh, concentrations of your uh, different growing medium uh, here uh, from the big containers before you put them in there. Uh, they need a they need a slightly less concentrated solution while they're growing. Um, when you're germinating seeds, just water. Then when they get a certain size. Um, then you just go up a little bit in concentration and then once they get uh, a few good leaves they get fairly large um, they have a pretty good root system going you can just go ahead and throw them into the uh, main batch um, until they get a lot larger and then we'll increase the um, concentration again to get them to produce flowers which will eventually get you some nice uh, really nice uh, tomatoes just like these so and these are just a uh, cherry tomato variety. Any kind of small tomato is going to work great. Uh, I think you may, unless you have a really good lighting setup, you may have issues growing larger tomatoes very quickly, uh, but these are growing really well, uh, just enough. I've got one plant and it continually, continually likes to grow over 10 foot. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, here are some little seedlings that I've grown. Um, I'm going to transplant all of them. Uh, and then I'll weed out which one grows the best, uh, the couple that are the best uh, in the end. So, all right, so I got five jars here. Uh, these are just small mason jars. You can get them anywhere, uh, cheap, expensive, whatever, whatever you have. It uh, doesn't matter. You don't even have to use these. You can use small uh, Tupperware containers just as long as you can fit a small net cup such as this or if you like using bigger net cups. Um, then you'll have to um, use a bigger container, of course. Uh, just whatever, just whatever works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and put these net cups down in these jars. So uh, this part's really simple. Uh, you just need expanding clay pebble. Um, I don't. I got these on Amazon. They're pretty cheap, and the coolest thing about them is that they're reusable. Uh, I don't know how long you can reuse them for, but I've been reusing the same ones uh, for several years now. Uh, no issues. Just let them dry. Uh, um, I've heard you can also sterilize them and uh, dry them out even better, putting them in the oven at a low temperature for a while. Uh, but I've never done that. I just let them sit uh, in a jar like this uh, up or in a shallow dish and let them air out. What, what we do to start out with this is after your seedlings are a certain size, uh, you don't want the roots to be too large. They'll start, um, it'll be start getting too hard to get them into the, the connect cup. So you got to find that perfect ratio. I don't know if you can see, but they just have these just single roots coming out. Um, and it's not too much to manage. I like to start mine a little lower because especially tomatoes, they um, will actually need a lot more support, especially when they're young, until uh, until you can get them up into a cage uh, and support them that way. But I try to, try to start them a little lower, and uh, as they get bigger, I'll pile more of those in around them to try to support it a little bit better. Here's my first little tomato plant. Uh, it's ready to go in. Uh, just have it down about halfway up the net cup uh, worth of uh, uh, clay pebbles here so and I'm just gonna stick it's got a long this one's got a long root on it I'm gonna try to get it down below and through the net cup if I can just kinda get it down to where it's gonna hang down into the water when we get the water in there alright so what I did was I kinda took some of the some of the clay pebbles out and uh, got the root down to where I want it uh, this is by no means a science this is just it's more of an art than anything. Just kind of get, you'll get the feel of it. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is put too big of a pebble sitting right on top of your um, 
of your plant, it they can smash the roots and they can smash the stems of the plant pretty easily and that's no good. You don't want to do that. There we go. All right. So you can easily see the root goes down and uh, actually drops down into the, uh, you can't see, it's really hard to see. It looks like a crack, but it's just, you can kind of see the root down in there. It just kind of sticks down. That way I kind of can gauge where the water needs to be. Uh, having some roots is really nice because then you can gauge the water levels a lot easier than if you didn't have a very big root base at all. But like I said earlier, uh, too big of a root base is also an issue. So, all right, so no, no pinching of the stem going on there. That's good. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it as uh, least restricted as possible. Uh, kind of simulating natural dirt. Uh, give it also gives this little plant. Uh, there we go. Yeah, perfect. All right. See, um, not very many pebbles in there now. Uh, but this it's gonna grow up. It's gonna grow bigger. Uh, it's gonna grab these roots will grab all along that neck all along that net cup uh, Take up the whole net cup as much as it much as it can um, The net cup is really the biggest structure the clay pebbles really help it a lot um, until it gets bigger uh, and just helps um, Hold on to some of that moisture a little longer uh, depending on your system so they're really good, really good, especially in the start. Uh, and you have to have them for sure when you're starting them out small. Uh, and these are by far superior to uh, the the plugs, which I've had bad experiences with trying to get roots to grow through them. So, all right, so that's that's it for that. Now we're just gonna fill it up with some growth solution. I'm gonna quickly go over the growth solution. Uh, and the concentrations and how to prepare it real quick I've already prepared it so I'm not going to prepare it in front of you guys there's plenty of stuff and also the instructions are crazy easy uh, so uh, I make it stupid easy by following it exactly um, or halving the recipe to keep the numbers simple um, but you can do as much or as, or, as, or as little as you want so what I use is this system by General Hydroponics uh, it comes in a three-part system, uh, Flora Grow, Flora Micro, and uh, Flora Bloom. So it contains three separate ratios of what you need to do different things. And these come as a set, uh, but you can buy them in bulk and uh, save a little bit of money. But these things last a long time, unless you're growing tomatoes. Then, of course, this one gets really eaten up. Uh, my one tomato plant has drained this one. So, uh, but this is great for having uh, a blooming or blooming plants like uh, flowering varieties, and that's what tomatoes uh, flower really well. And my tomatoes have taken off really well since I've changed the solution up and have a higher concentration of this, as according to the instructions. So let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, for seedlings and cutlings, you have um, for flora grow, flora micro, and flora bloom one fourth. Uh, teaspoon per gallon or 33 milliliters per 100 liters um, so I use teaspoon per gallon and uh, I just mixed up one-fourth of the flora grow one-fourth the flora micro and one-fourth teaspoon of flora bloom and mix that all into one gallon and I got about a half gallon here left and we'll show you that it really doesn't look much different than water um, especially when I'm against this wood table, it's just, it's a really pale solution. Uh, it doesn't have very many nutrients at all. Um, got a dirt floating in it. Okay. Well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up. And what I like to do is I like to get it about halfway up the root. Uh, that allows the root to breathe at the top and suck up as much water and nutrients as it needs in the water. Um, and I like to keep it about that ratio, about halfway up the roots, um, you know, throughout the whole growth period. Uh, at a certain point, uh, I'll keep it about the same water level on the bucket, regardless of how big the roots get. Uh, just, just so that the roots constantly get air as well as uh, constantly get water. 
So, and that's key, uh, especially to this method where I don't use a single bubbler. Uh, the only thing that requires electricity in my system or maintenance is my lights. Um, and, of course, solutions and water. But where I like to keep the water, I'm going to, oh, I've kind of knocked them over. It's okay, I'll pick them back up here in a second. There we go. That'll be good. Um, like I said, just keep a good eye on where your roots are. Um and your water levels are at all times you know just check it once a day uh, once every two two days if you get really really busy but just be careful yeah that's pretty much it really uh, set this under a sunny place um, just a really nice sunny window uh, or under a nice set of grow lights um, pretty close don't get it uh, just insanely close where the heat's gonna really uh, affect them especially if you use like CFL bulbs um, they they do get a little warm uh, and that can damage them if you get them too close but I like to keep them about 6 to 10, 10 inches or so uh, when they're starting out uh, now you can easily get them as low as like a foot and that'll be just fine so I'm gonna put this in the thing and that'll be it for this video I'm gonna do the rest of these and uh, I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope that it is uh, really useful and that um, you're going to know uh, how to grow your own like super amazing tomatoes, even in the winter. Uh, if you're like me and you like tomatoes all year round, uh, it's just a no-brainer. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, please leave a comment below. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, or if you just liked it, let me know. Uh, like the video, uh, share with your friends um, if they would enjoy it. So, thanks a lot. Have a good one.